I'm married to a cat lady. Yeah, you know the type. I don't have to explain. Well, a cat lady, except with donkeys. Um, a donkey lady. In the Christian tradition, Palm Sunday is one week before Easter Sunday. It commemorates the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem for what we today call Passion or Holy Week. It is the defining event that begins the countdown of Jesus' time on earth. We live in Bethphage, my wife and I. It's a small village about halfway from Bethany to Jerusalem. It's on the east side of the Mount of Olives. It's not far from the mountaintop. We're not rich, not poor. We're as normal as normal can be. We own a small shop that sells firewood for camping to pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem. Our most valuable possession, however, a donkey. Kind of an older donkey and her foal. It's nearly weaned, never been ridden, and still follows its mother around. Yes, I'm irritated at my wife. Wean it, break it, and the colt is worth more. But my wife, it's like it's her precious child. She treats it like a precious child. She won't let me train it, won't even let me touch it. Donkey lady. We make extra money by renting out the donkey to those who are fatigued from walking up the Mount of Olives. And it would double if I could rent out that colt. Traffic has increased due to, um, well, let's just say these are exciting and dangerous times. Weeks ago, uh, less than three miles from here in the village of Bethany, Lazarus was raised from the dead by Jesus. I mean, I, I don't know. It's the story and you don't go making things up like that. Lots of people hope to see Lazarus and uh, you know, verify what's happened to him. It's a pretty big deal. He was dead for days, four, I'm pretty sure. Um, so that's the exciting part. The dangerous, well, I've heard some of the travelers are looking for ways to kill Lazarus, eliminate any trace of Jesus' ability to raise people from the dead. It's just what I've heard. So it's the Sunday before Passover, already a steady stream of people on the road through our village coming from the countryside to Jerusalem to celebrate. The uh, donkey lady and I are outside preparing to paint some lamb's blood above the door frame and on either side. We've got our hyssop branches to use as paint brushes. This is not a required part of modern Passover activities, but you know, we like the, the reminder of the Passover story from Exodus. We hear a noise behind us, turn around, two men untying our donkey and the foal stealing in broad daylight. Hey, I shout, and they freeze. They just stare, what are you doing? I can't believe how brazen. I mean, who do you think you are? Right there, right in front of our eyes. I'm getting all amped, you know, I'm a strong guy. I, uh, I chop wood for a living, besides the point. This is not happening, no sir, not today, right? One of them says, and his, his voice uh, so soft, well, the Lord needs it. He'll send it back soon. It's like an angel has closed my mouth. I can't say anything. I look at donkey lady. <laughs> she looks at me. We just nod our heads. And the men walk away with our most valuable possessions, her precious baby. So a little while later, we hear a shout in the distance toward Bethany. And then a crowd comes into view, heading straight toward us, and we can hardly believe our eyes. Some guy is leading our donkey. Behind him, another man rides on our colt, robes draped over the colt like blankets, and he's sitting on top. We expect the colt to bolt toward us, to, to its home, to its manger, you know, to feed. And the colt stays calm, follows its mother, passes us, heads toward Jerusalem. And a huge crowd follows the donkeys. And I, you know, I want an explanation. I pull this man aside. He's reluctant to stop and lose his place. So I walk with him 
He tells me the man on the colt is Jesus. And behind him, his apostles and Lazarus. And then all the crowds of people. And, and some are the ones from Jerusalem who went to verify Lazarus is alive. Some are Passover pilgrims on the way to Jerusalem. Many look like they're from Galilee. Others are local from Bethany. And I walk to Donkey Lady, who is smiling from ear to ear, by the way. And I point. It's the Lord. It's, it's Jesus. She just beams. He needs, he needs our donkey. And it's like a punch to the gut. Can this be the Messiah? The Lord who created the universe and needs something? He needs something that we can give him? Ordinary people, a, a donkey lady and her husband meeting the Lord's need? I race to catch up with my donkeys, with Jesus. I reach him just as he crests the Mount of Olives and comes to a stop. And the noise of the crowd washes over and down the west side of the Mount of Olives. The uproar crashes into the Kidron Valley and onto the east side of the Temple Mount, echoing back to the Mount of Olives over an area so large, hundreds of acres with thousands of campfires. They smoke like pots of incense, fires of sacrifice. And the sun behind us reflects off of the golden temple in front of us through the smoke of more fires of sacrifice. Jesus rides down the west side of the Mount of Olives and people throw palm branches onto the path in front of him. And some throw their cloaks on the ground and the crowds nearest Jesus, they're just, they're delirious with joy. And some of us know and some of us don't, but Jesus is fulfilling the prophecies of Isaiah and Zechariah about the king of Israel entering Jerusalem. And, and our unridden cult is a critical piece of the prophecy. Jesus needed our cult to fulfill prophecy. The people around the fires in the huge valley, they look up at Jesus and they see him as their king their Messiah, they cheer, chant, chant verses from the scriptures. Hosanna, blessed is, is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Hosanna to the son of David. Wow. And Jesus goes down the steep path and the sound of the thousands of people, it's, it's overwhelming. Some of the Pharisees at the front of the crowd you know, they're furious. They know the crowd is acknowledging Jesus is the Messiah. They rebuke Jesus. They try to get him to quiet the crowd. With a look on his face, I can only describe as sublime. He says, if the crowd is made to be quiet, the very stones on the ground will shout out. And the triumphant crowd approaches Jerusalem. And Jesus steps down from the donkey full and uh, quietly tells one of his apostles, take it back to its owner. I mean, I hear him. So I step up. I take my two donkeys. Jesus smiles. And, and he says four words to me. You met my need. Why is Donkey Lady not with me? What a moment. And I'm, I'm going to have to go back and try to recreate it for her. So I start back to the house and uh, the crowd stops. Jesus sits on the ground. I'm pretty certain he's, he's crying. I only hear a few tearful words, a lament over Jerusalem. And then I'm swallowed up by the crowd. I reach home. I hug her. She 
is the reason we were able to meet the Lord's need. And I tell her that. She was right to keep the cult unridden. I tell her that. I tell my wife. We keep track of Jesus over the next several weeks. It's hard to do, not because of lack of information, but because it's hard to tell truth from fiction. For the first week, Jesus teaches at the temple every day, always in conflict with the Jewish leaders. The Jewish leaders finally have enough, and they arrest Jesus, and they arrange for the Romans to execute him. Crucifixion. And the body of Jesus disappears. The Jewish leaders say that his apostles stole the body. The rumor among the people is that Jesus rose from the dead. And then reports that Jesus is seen by hundreds of people, not just his followers. He is seen in Jerusalem and in Galilee. It's been about seven weeks since Jesus rode our donkey. and We've decided to keep the cult, to never Never let it be written again. Well, my wife still treats it like a precious child. For seven Sundays, I lead the cult to the top of the Mount of Olives. I relive in detail every moment of the day we met the need of Jesus. When I come to the top of the mountain, I just, I just stand there, remembering the fires and the shouts, the palm leaves on the path, and then I return home with a feeling of disappointment for six Sundays. But on the seventh Sunday, in the distance, is a group of men. I take the colt, and we go. And as we get close, I see it's Jesus with his apostles. I am only about a stone's throw away. And Jesus starts rising in the air. He goes into the clouds and disappears. I walk toward the apostles and there are these two men in dazzling white clothes approaching. Galileans, why are you standing there looking into the sky? This same Jesus will return in the same way he went into heaven. The apostles break out in praise and happiness and they and they smile at me. They remember the cult. At least I think they do, but then they head to Jerusalem. I return home with the cult to my wife. He's gone now. He's really gone. I tell her of the story of Jesus rising in the air. She doesn't even seem surprised. We were willing to meet his need, she says. And many people were blessed. I know that should make me feel better, but I'm, I'm sad that he's gone. Now, we will meet the needs of his followers, she says. I'm so glad I married a donkey lady. Jesus says when we help others in his name, we are helping him, meeting his need, meeting the need of the Lord God of the universe.